Hello, it's Ricardo and welcome to the Epic Fantasy Battle Simulator, a game where you can engage in huge, ginormous battles between your favourite fantasy clans, races, whatever, and see who will win. Now, the Epic Fantasy Battle Simulator has been provided to me by Mutiny Software, and the full game will be on release via Steam via August the 30th. 2021. Now, in this pre-release version, there are only two main factions and a monsters faction, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Settings are quite concise. Um, you've got the ability of a high range of resolutions that you can use with all your big graphics cards, and it's also going to be the inclusion of a workshop mode as well, to give that game a bit of extra life as well for the modding community. So starting up a battle, you see a nice high resolution map. Now, as I might have mentioned, there's only one map included with this particular version of the game, but on release, there will be others. Now, the units, as I've mentioned, you've got Orcs and you've got the West Kingdoms. These are two main factions that you can pit against each other. And there will be other factions on release. Four factions will be present, including Dwarfs, and the undead. But at the moment we've got make do with the orcs and the west kingdoms, so good old traditional orcs and knights. So placing your units on the map, you select your unit from the right hand side, orc slayers for example, place them on the map and then once you've placed it you can drag them and set the orientation of the block of the units and position them where you want to put them. You can then set their team or you can remove the units if you put them in the wrong location. Pretty standard stuff. So with my 3080 Supreme, I was able to manage this no problem at all and got quite a few units on the screen without any noticeable slowdown or loss of frames. So as you can see, it's quite easy to drag those Orcs units or any units onto the map and then set their numbers. And it's quite easy to place. And if you make a mistake, just hit that remove key and away you go. So here we've got our Orc Crushers. We've got our other Orc Slashers. And now we've got Orc Destroyers, which you've got to see the resemblance of the good old uruk from Lord of the Rings in there. They've got that big old sort of like axe slash sword with a big spiky thing on the end of it. You can get bogged down on where you're going to place your units, but that's half the fun of the sort of like... The strategy of this game. Get your strategy in here now because once you start the battle, it's all hands on deck. Everyone is going to start charging towards other people. Setting your archers is slightly different. They tend to stay where they are, um, but you then set the orientation of the angle of where they're going to be shooting their missile type weapons at the opposing players. It's very important to make sure you've got everybody on the right team. Else, if you put someone on the wrong team at this stage of the game, you could end up them being shot in the back. Moving on to the Western Kingdoms, we've got the Swordsman, typically a knight with a sword. And you can place them in the same way as we place the other units. Swordsman with shields, another nice rendered module model, just like the old Crusaders. And you can place them again in a similar fashion, making sure you've got the orientation of them right. By default, these models all come in as Team 1, and then you have to go in there retrospectively once you've placed them and set the right team. Set whether you want them just to stay in one place, hold position, or whether you want them to attack as well. Getting some spearmen on as well, and once you've got our spearmen in place, we can also set some bowmen to get some missile cover down, making sure we've got the orientation of the bowmen right, and they're facing towards their enemies. So as I mentioned, everyone's set as Team 1 so far, but we haven't finished yet because we've also got a monsters section. And so far, these monsters consist of Ogres, the Demon Lord, which is 25 ways a Balrog, to be perfectly honest with you, with a flaming whip and a sword. It is a Balrog. And it's a lovely rendered Balrog as well. We've also got Ogres. And where would any Orc Horde be without a few Ogres? But also we've got Oak Trees as well. So they're going to be pretty much like the Ents, for want of any better word. And I suppose it's all down to copyright. So I've set my teams as well. I'm placing my Oak Trees, or Ents. Let's call them what they are. 
uh, and we'll get them into position and make sure we've got them all on the right team so everyone starts fighting everybody else. The Balrogs I've set into team three, but the Orcs are going to have their Ogres over here in this side of things. We'll make sure they're going to be on team one. Make sure we've got the orientation right. And our Oak Trees are going to be on team two, which is our Western Kingdoms. Once you've set all this up and you've got a couple of thousand units on the screen, this is where this game really comes in to its own. Not only have you got high resolution landscapes, you've also got very high resolution battles to have, right? All made up of these lovely rendered models. Now, once you start the battle, everyone starts charging at everybody else, providing they've been given the attack flag. And you can zoom around in cinematic mode with no details or HUD telling you which team is winning or what frame rate it is. And you can follow them round as well. Now with Steam as well, you can press F12. F12 takes a screenshot and that can be quite good for getting some good screenshots of the battle. As you can see, my Western Knights are clashing in there with the Orcs and the Ogres. It really is good stuff. If you press P, you can possess a unit. So I'm going to possess this Ogre here. And then using the mouse buttons, and the WASD keys, not only can I move around, but I can also start wailing on the enemy combatants. And you can see my ogre is getting owned and his health is decreasing. Once your ogre falls to the opposing force and dies, you then go back into your cinematic mode or your mode that enables you to go around the map. So that was possess mode. We've also got something called time control. This allows you to speed up or slow down the action. So you think, oh, I quite fancy seeing what's happening with these Balrogs and these Knights. Then you can press the one key on your keyboard and that will slow the action down so you can see every little gory detail there is to see. Which can basically give you some really spectacular looking video. There is a bit of gore and a bit of blood, so be very careful when showing this around perhaps the younger players and younger generation. Now, you can also speed up time if you're getting a bit bored of things. You want things moving a little bit quicker, and that's done by pressing 2. By pressing 2, it then goes up to 2 speeds quicker, to the point where it looks a little bit like what we used to say in the UK, a bit Benny Hill. And here you go, I've pressed 2, you can see they're moving at quite a rate of knots towards those orc archers. They're mowing through them, cutting them through like a hot knife through butter. And they can be quite comedic, to be perfectly honest. So, this is Fantasy Battle Simulator. It's not bad. And it'll be released with more units on the 30th of August. As I mentioned, that'll include dwarves and undead as well. Now you can control the monsters, control the units, and get it in down and dirty should you want to. But to be perfectly honest with you, you're going to get an awful lot of fun with the what if factor of this battle. I've been Ricardo. Thanks for watching. Check back for more videos in the series.